it's 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 really insane the uh, amount of you know how Trump supporters are so ostracized in today's society, especially by um, m- minority Americans and young Americans. And you know that's part of my whole mission is to kind of help show young and minority Americans that you know there's more than one way of thinking. You know we're all we're all Americans. You know we we got to stop segregating each other. We got to stop dividing each other because that's exactly what. You know the global establishment. That's exactly what they want. They want us to segregate each other. They want us to be divided. They want it. They want me to look at myself as a black man, and to look at you as a white man, and to and to think that you have some sort of advantage over me in this country. And that's just not the case at all. What has your experience been? Um, you're very in tune with with the racial situation. You comment on it a lot. Obviously, the uh, tensions are getting. You know, they're flaring more now, especially the, the, the Charlotte situation is a great example. What has your um, upbringing been like and what's your personal experience been like, uh, let's say, in the racial context or, or as a conservative, let's say, even that's, that, that can cause its own friction? What's that been like for you? Sure. So I'll start by saying out of my 22 years of being on this earth, I have never, ever, ever, ever been a victim of, of racism from, you know, from white people, from really anybody. I've never... You know, I, I go about my day, and I work in the uh, car salesman business. You know, I deal with people every day for, for all walks of life, all different, you know, <clears throat> uh, you know, wealth and you know things like that. I deal with all sorts of people, and I've just never, ever, ever been a victim of racism or felt like I was oppressed by anybody. Really, I mean, I'm doing better. It's I'm actually doing much better than. Most people I know, a lot, most, a lot of white friends that I know, I'm doing a lot better than you know than they are. And to say that I'm oppressed some way, I think it's just downright lying. I feel like uh, this victimization ideology is a way to kind of make an excuse for you know a lot of uh, minority Americans who just you know aren't doing all that they can. And I I feel like there's no limit to what can really be done. You know, regardless of what your skin color is, I mean, we have a black we have a black man sitting in the Oval Office. You know, we have a black attorney general. We have black mayors, black judges. You know, there's no there's really no cap. There's no limit to where you know a black man in America can go, and that's been shown to us. You know, throughout the course of American history. And speaking of cap, you got your kind of your first taste of viral fame, if I'm not mistaken, on your video on Cap Kaepernick. And it was a very powerful delivery. What I found um, most, I, I mean, I watched it and I was just like, wow, this kid's awesome. And then about halfway through the video, you segued into like globalism. We did like a New World Order, one of these. And, you know, that, that let's say even just a year ago or two years ago, those are concepts that people would have scoffed at. They would have said conspiracy theory, this, that. And some of them still will. But in the last year, the word globalism and globalist has become mainstream. And I found it so um, refreshing and amazing that you took it down that road because it, it really does all root to that. That's what Black Lives Matter reads back to you, trace it back to you, trace the funding, follow the money. You'll find it ends in George Soros's uh, wallet. Typically, that's where a lot of these problems uh, originate. So your video, Kaepernick, um, what prompted you to put that out there? And how are your feelings now, a couple weeks later, having seen how this is now pervaded all the way through all, you know, all different NFL teams, high school teams, you have... Yes, <clears throat> Navy sailors doing this this uh, Black Power salute, kneeling dur- during the anthem. So, what what are your thoughts on the, on all that so far, as it has uh, trickled down from Kaepernick? So, I believe that the entire purpose of everything that we see going on, the racial divide, the anti-American rhetoric, it all goes back to globalism. You know, um, it goes back to, like you said, follow the money. You know, who is who is really behind all this? And you're right, you know, people like George Soros, you know, the neocons, the globalists, you know, secularism, the New World Order, as I said in my video. And what I really love about, you know, Donald Trump is he is literally the antithesis to globalism, you know, uh, build a wall, you know, nationalism, America first, you know, these are refreshing words to me. Because lately, um, you know, through politics, all we've been hearing is, you know, this unization of, you know, the countries and governments and trade and, and all this, all this, all this crazy stuff. And, you know, you got to realize once once we start getting into that, we're going to start losing rights, you know, and when we lose rights, there's something that we just can't get back, you know. 
Right. If, we, if we're answering to a global body such as the United Nations or if you're in Europe, you're answering to the European Union, the laws of your country end up getting superseded by the laws of the, the global power. And people don't realize that. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's dangerous when you centralize power in a place that is so far away and so foreign from, you know, let's say the the laws and the customs and the culture of your own country, you start losing your country. And like you said, build a wall. Um, what do we do? What are we without borders? In the words of Michael Savage, borders, language, culture, those are the three, really, the three things that the, the pillars that define a nation. And we're losing that. And what's interesting, you also mentioned the neocons. You go back into the, when there was 17 or 18 uh, actual viable candidates uh, on in, in the GOP. And None of them were talking about this stuff. Maybe Rand Paul a tiny little bit, but the rest of them, you could kind of tell they were all cut from the same cloth. They were all um, controlled opposition. They were put there to make us think that we had a choice. Uh, personally, I think that Jeb Bush was supposed to ultimately be the one that came out of all that and then would end up being the fall guy for Hillary Clinton. This has all been arranged long, long ahead, of, you know, long ago at the Bilderberg meetings and, um, you know, by the Trilateral Commission Council on Foreign Relations. But then you had Donald Trump come in out of nowhere and the guy with the power, the charisma and the the intent to change uh, the course of our nation's future. So speak a little bit about when it was that that Trump really spoke to you when it when it was that you figured out Trump was the man that you wanted to support and why. So the first day um, I saw that Donald Trump was running for president. You know, I'm not going to lie. I'm a young guy. I didn't really know too, too much about Donald Trump. I knew, you know, he had the show Apprentice. I know that he's a big billionaire. You know, I wasn't really too sure. So when I started looking into him, uh, you know, I started to become uh, feeling very good about the things that he was saying because he's saying all the things that I've been saying for a long time. And especially on illegal immigrant, uh, illegal, illegal immigration, that was like, you know, the forefront of my uh, trail towards Donald Trump because – like I said, um, my I was born in Puerto Rico, so I was born a citizen. But you know, unfortunately for my parents, they had to go through the process to get into America. You know, so my family are legal immigrants, and it was so so much harder on us because of people who don't want to listen to the laws and want to just come into this country illegally. And it just shouldn't be this way. Uh, legal immigrants just shouldn't be fighting with illegal immigrants to get into America. That's just not right. It's not fair. And it needs to be stopped. And I agreed with Donald Trump on that 110%. As far as um, other things he was saying, I agree with him also, you know, Second Amendment, I'm a big Second Amendment guy. I, you know, I think we need to keep the Constitution. I'm a, I'm a big guy in the Constitution. Without the Constitution, we're not even America, you know, if you could deliver a message to young folks, to um, minorities, to black folks, to anyone who you think in your experience is having a difficulty accepting Donald Trump or getting past the media bias that they've created in, in a lot of these people's minds. In a nutshell, what would you tell them? We have 34 days until the election. Maybe they're not sure who they're going to vote for. Maybe they're leaning, leaning towards Trump, but they're just not convinced. What would you tell them in a nutshell if you could speak candidly with them? I would tell them like this. Hey, you got to look at both sides. You know, I've looked at both sides and, you know, it's more clear to me that, you know, the side of Hillary is just the side of, you know, the new world order. And, you know, I'm going to be blunt in saying that I truly believe that, you know, if Hillary is put in office, we will be one big step closer to that new world order. And like you said, that means loss of rights, loss of privileges, loss of America, you know, possibly. And. Trump, again, like I said, is the antithesis to, to that. And it's it's quite clear uh, with all the media bias. I mean, who runs the media now? You know, the global establishment, of course, run the media. So I would say that try not to be indoctrinated into what, um, you know, the media and social media and, you know, the liberal agenda, what they're trying to, you know, shove down your throat. Like I said, take a step back and skepticize it, you know. Don't follow the herd of people who are, you know, uh, not voting for Trump simply because they're black or, you know, who have this uh, victimhood mentality and all, the, all this, you know, anti-police and anti this, anti that. I would, I would say to them, take a step back and think as a human being, think as an individual. And that's what I did. And I got to tell you, I feel like a much freer person. Uh, I walked off the Democratic plantation, if you will, and I uh, didn't drink the Kool-Aid. 
as they say. And honestly, it's it's really good. I, I think that that more people need to think like this as an individual and less like a race because we all we all be the same in the military. We don't look at each other as color. We look at each other as brothers and sisters in uniform. And I think it's time in America we started looking at each other the same way. You know, when ISIS, um, you know, comes over and, you know, uh, lets a bomb off, they don't let, you know, the black people go go through first and just kill the white people. They're they're killing them. They're here to kill Americans. They look at us as American. And it's time that we start looking at it the same exact way. All right. Viral sensation, Trump supporter, anti-globalist and Army National Guardsman. We thank you for your service and for your time, Mark. And we look forward to the message that you'll be putting forth in the next uh, coming weeks and months. Thank you.